Hi, I'm Garth McKenzie, and this is your weekly look at the S&P 500 chart. This week, I'm taking a bigger picture look at the S&P 500, starting with a monthly chart, and then we're going to zoom all the way in and look at the weekly chart, the daily chart, and then into the hourly chart, just to see what's happening there, because there have been some quite meaningful developments happening on the S&P 500 chart over the last week and over the last month. So let's start out with a look at the bigger picture, and let's have a look at the monthly chart of the S&P 500. On this chart, what's quite interesting to note is the fact that January formed a monthly shooting star candle. Now, a shooting star candle is typically formed when the market trades up to a higher level during the time period being mentioned, in this case, a monthly period. And then it closes all the way down towards the bottom end of the month's range. And in this case, you can see the long tail to the upside and then the red candle that formed by the end of January. So what it actually implies is that for the month of January, the S&P 500 closed the month negative, notwithstanding the fact that it was actually quite strong at some point during the middle of the month. So it gave back a lot of the earlier month's gains. And that is somewhat of a concern for the bulls potentially. These uh, shooting star candles, when they form, very often do mark a top, certainly a shorter term top, if not a, a longer term top. And the last times that we saw these shooting star candles form on a monthly basis were in uh, January of 2020. And we all know what happened after that. And then in June of 2019. And after that occasion, the market consolidated for about three months and went sideways. So what I'm saying is that I think this shooting star candle on the monthly chart is worth paying attention to at best it probably means that the market's upward momentum has now slowed down and we're going to see some choppy sideways action for the next couple of months and at worst it might mean that we see a deeper pullback in the market but overall i think it's an indication that this generally rising trend environment that we've seen for the last 10 months or so has probably come to an end and we're going to see a bit of a pause in the market's overall upward trajectory here. If we then zoom in onto the weekly chart and have a look at that, you can see that last week's candle formed a bearish engulfing candle. And that's where the trading action of the entire week effectively engulfs the previous week. And in this case, it actually engulfed the previous two weeks worth of trading. And it closed towards the end of the, the low of the week's trading range. So that also is a notable reversal that we saw on the S&P 500 last week. And again, it talks to the point that the upward momentum here seems to be slow going down and that we might see some further sideways choppy corrective type action on this weekly chart for the next couple of weeks. Let's then zoom in a little bit more closely and take a look at the daily chart. And what's interesting to note here is that the big triangle pattern that I'd alluded to previously, uh, which formed in the final quarter of 2020, that target uh, at 38.70 from that triangle pattern was met. And since then, the market seems to have come off the boil. As you can see on this chart, the price has begun to break out the bottom of that upward sloping channel that has been intact for the last two months or so. And the price is now trading below the 15 day exponential moving average. And that's the first time that that's happened now since October. So again, it talks to the point that the market appears to be running out of upward momentum and we're into some sort of a corrective phase for the S&P 500 here. Finally, I want to take a look at the hourly chart to get a handle on some of the more relevant near term levels that we need to be monitoring on this chart. And there you can see them quite clearly spelled out. So there's a head and shoulders pattern there, which has formed over the last month or so. And the break below 37.50 on that chart did validate that head and shoulders pattern. But the price has managed to pop back above that level. So we need to monitor whether this pattern fails or not. A big level to monitor in that respect is going to be 38.30. And if the market were to be able to break above 38.30, then it might imply that that head and shoulders pattern is no longer valid. But at the lower levels, we've got support at 37.50, more support at 3,700, and then further to that support down at 36.60. So overall, it looks as if this market has got, uh, you know, the upward momentum appears as if it's slowing. And we're probably going to see some sort of sideways choppy corrective type of action play out for the next couple of weeks on the S&P 500. That's all I've got for you this week. I'll be back again next week with another look at the major US indices.